What's up guys? Are sports analytics and data taking the fun out of sports for young athletes? In today's video, we'll explore how the rise of data-driven decision-making technology in sports is impacting kids' passion for the game and what we, as parents, can do to keep the love of sports alive. So tune in, it's gonna be great! Let's go! Let's do it! What's up, Fit Fat Dads? Or is that just me and you? We're just the Fit Fat Dads. Kind of fit. Kind of fat. Kind of fat. Look, man, faith, family, and fitness. That's why we're here. That's the three, baby. That's right. All right, Blair. So I want to talk to you a little bit. We have gotten into this age, this digital age, Mm -hmm. where we are constantly exposed to massive amounts of data. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything that we do. Yep. I mean, we've got an Apple Watch here. Whoop strap. You've got the whoop strap. Or whoop strap. Whoop. I, but in, it seems like every th- movement, your phone tracks you everywhere you go. Yep. There's data on everything. So it, it's whether <clears throat> what we're doing online, digital habits, social media, to now what we're going to talk about today, sports analytics. There are so ma- many like numbers and statistics. We're just bombarded with yeah. it. And it almost makes us feel like we're constantly comparing ourselves to others, and we're never good enough. So, let's. Where I kind of went with this today, <clears throat> and and it's just kind of something that was spinning around in my head. Yeah. In the day of of to dat, data, and and I'm glad that you and I didn't have to grow up with this in youth sports. No. I, I mean, it was just kind of go out there and play as hard as you can. Absolutely. But today. With everything that's out there about performance metrics, being able to see how you compare with any type of kid, any type of sport from around the country, do you feel like kids are just kind of giving up before they even start? I think the comparison, let me back up really quick. I think at a certain level, the metrics and the data absolutely needs to be there. Right. Right. At at a certain level. But we're talking youth sports today. Okay. Yep. Youth sports, kids they're finding the love for the game right now. Like, that's the point of it. Yeah. Right? And if you're, you know, it, and if you are so data-driven, and let's talk, you know, we'll, we'll talk baseball. So that's, you know, that's my sport that I grew up playing and, and, you know, ended up going and playing college. If I was told, hey, your velocity's down or your launch angle for your bat was three degrees off or, you know, you're averaging, you know, your velocity off the bat is normally 75 and now it's 65. You got to get in the weight room. That would kill it for me. Like, yeah. I don't know how I would have been able to handle that at like 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. Yeah. I, I, it just, I, I don't know. I, I just feel like, to your point, if we're talking youth sports, and it doesn't matter whether they're from the very early ages of youth sports to five to, we'll say, 15. Yeah, I mean, high right, school ball. I would say high school. Yeah, and the high school ball. Yeah, but the data is out there. Yeah, and there's already percentiles and, and charts that that put kids at certain age that hey, you have to be able to throw at this speed, or you have to run a forty yard dash at this, or your ten yard cone drill. Does a kid even know what a kid ten yard uh, cone drill is? Hey, parents, your kids aren't being recruited at ten. <clears throat> Well, they feel like they are. They They're definitely not. think they are. <laughs> They're not. But, I, I, again, kids are smarter than we give them credit for. Oh, yeah. And they are much more in tune to the technology and data that's out there today. And whether we believe it or not, I actually think that the kids are comparing themselves at very early ages and making decisions that because I don't measure up to these statistics or these benchmarks. Right. Right. Then I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna play the game. Hey, it, maybe they're a late bloomer. They, maybe they're a late bloomer. But they don't understand that. That's right. That's what I'm saying. And, and so they, they don't. They don't. So let, let's go to. We're, we're gonna break this mm-hmm. up into several parts. And the first thing I want to talk about is just real quickly the impact of overthinking data because I think that's the number one thing. Is there's so much data out there mm-hmm. that we can be paralyzed. Paralysis by analysis. Mm-hmm. And, and as we talked about 
even with adults, it, it leads to indecision and doubt. You, you decide that I'm not good enough, so you don't even take the opportunity. You don't have the motivation to continue on because you don't feel like that's where you need to be. And, and that comes from social media and it's, it's amplified. But now that it's not just social media, there's data to back it up yeah. on all these different things. And it's not just speed and velocity and how fast you can throw. It's height, weight, heart rate, VO2 max. They have invented things and made up different categories now based on some of these readings that people have, right? I, I mean, and it can go it can go to anything. How much money are you making at a certain age? <laughs> you know? And that's way too deep. For for kids, that's way too deep. But I'm telling you, kids, I wouldn't rule it out that they don't already think down some of those paths. And it, it goes back to the main point of this whole thing. It causes them to quit before they even start. So that's an impact of over – we'll tee it up that way. That's the mindset that I feel like today's youth have yeah. is because they're very smart. They're very savvy. They're very research-driven. So they're going to go find their facts, and they're going to go have their research available, and then they're going to present their case based upon that. And I think that's leading to a lot of oh, absolutely decisions being made on whether something's right for them because of a little box that data or, or categories puts so, them in. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. So on that note, as parents and the parents that we're speaking to now and the dads, do you keep that data from your kid and you just be like, hey, you don't need that? Well, I, it just depends. I mean, I, I don't know that you can keep the data hmm. from your kid. I, I mean, eventually, let's face it, a, a cell phone is a necessity of life. Now, that's the a whole, bug. That's a whole other episode. <laughs> uh, when do you give your, <laughs> your that's kid a great episode? Kid a phone. Yeah. But they're going to eventually have one. Yeah. But sooner or later, they're going to get old enough where they're – they're going to get their own phone and they're going to go down their own path yeah. of before I think or do anything I'm going to see what the old uh, what the old Google right has to say about it. Okay. I see where you're going. So let's move into the other part. Okay. Let's talk about some of the tools, the analytical data tools and technology that uh, college sports and professional sports are using today yeah. to to evaluate this. <clears throat> and this has come long ways <laughs> since uh <laughs> yeah. You, well, I mean, you huddle, I think about huddle yeah i mean do you remember watching game film like okay i remember watching game film it would come out in the vcr and we'd have a remote back and forth back and forth back and forth and that, click, that, click, click 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 that's exactly right that's how we used to watch game film yeah i'm sure those video edits you made were spectacular yeah. oh well i didn't make it i didn't make it <laughs> kids today won't even remember the fuzzy vcr video oh, strains no. that I don't happened. even know. Th so this is. So I'm sure they made video e video edits in college for you guys, right? They edited practice videos, so they only saw yours and game film. Yeah, I okay, had a, okay, a few videos. Okay, so high school. I mean, do you remember high school football? Like we had to fast forward and rewind <laughs> yeah. to every play. That was it. Yeah, you fast yeah. forward to your. You know, on offense, we fast forward to the offense and we watched our three plays, and we fast forward yeah. to the next one. There was no music cut. No, with, oh, with no. the background going no. dark and the spotlight tracker on yeah. the player. Uh -huh. Yeah, there there was none of that. Uh huh. There wasn't none of that. But so the NFL, uh, and you can see it in some of the games if you watch it when they do it on Amazon Prime the Thursday night, the next gen stats. Yep. Have yep. you have you seen I've some seen of it? Oh yeah. Really cool metrics. Yep. But they're they're tracking it down to how fast somebody accelerates, how they make fast they make their cut, go out for a pass, how fast the ball velocity, metrics on everything that you wouldn't even think about. And they log all of this data. I mean, it's continually logged. And then they've got it down to, I want to select a kid that has that, that that's able to take a three-step drop and at this certain amount of time right. or get the ball released out of their hands at this certain amount of time or even things that I can't even really vocalize right now, they're looking at. And right. it's deep internal metrics that they've gathered over the last five years that kids wouldn't even think to <laughs> – <laughs> that they wouldn't even think that they're being measured by. One of my um, one of my new coaches, she was a D one softball player for an SEC program, and I mean, we were talking the other day, and she was like, "Yeah, they analyzed my my path through the the zone and my launch angle and everything like that." And she said, "I became obsessed with it." Yeah, and to a detriment of where if I was off a degree or here, I would spend hours yeah trying to fix that one degree that. And she said, "In the long run, it doesn't make a difference." 
Yeah, I mean, you still got to play the game. Still got to play the game. And and some of the things that they measure are things that you can't, and, and I say you can't control, but let's just say genetic, like they're measuring your hip angle and your knee angle and your shoulder angle yeah. and, and, and just the way that you naturally move. Right. They can measure that. And then they can track efficiency against that. So now they understand, hey, well, these are the types of body types that I need for that position because the data says if I draft somebody with this body type, I'm going to have this output. Right. Or I'm going to get somebody that's going to have a longer career. Right. And it's based off things that kids can't control. Yeah. Again, <laughs> at certain levels, absolutely. But it all leads to it, it, Yeah. It all leads to that because yeah. the data is out there. So do you think – okay. So my question, do you think in youth sports that is prominent? Do you think – do you think – do you think kids and coaches at the, I don't want to say the rec league level, but we'll, okay, we'll just use that terminology. The rec league level has that terminology or has that, excuse me, technology and is tracking to that level? It's only a matter of time. I That's don't think, true. I don't think yeah. at the rec league, no. Okay. Okay. At the AAU ball, yeah. travel ball, where it gets really serious and yeah. it's all about making money and ah there's the next one i guarantee you yeah. it is it's it's pumping in so we we talked we, we hit on video analysis mm -hmm. software but there's also the wearable uh software that that also adds to this uh which we we both are wearing wearables yeah. apple watch and, and the whoop band talk about the the whoop band what what does that measure um, for I mean, it measures everything: heart rate variability, sleep patterns. Um, they use a thing called strain, which I, you know, I don't, not quite sure that how to verbalize how it measures that. Um, it, but it also measures uh, skin temperature. So if you're starting to feel sick or things like that, you can say, "Hey, your your skin temperature is a little bit elevated," because that's a natural response that your body goes through. You know, hey, you might be getting sick, and that's it's actually pretty accurate. Um, I use it. So, I mean, there's a lot of data in there. And the main thing I really use it for is my sleep patterns to make sure yeah. I'm recovering enough. Yeah. Um, I know you were early, an early adopter and then decided to go a different direction because I think you were like Gen 1 and this is Gen 4. And I found it to be pretty accurate. When it says I'm under-recovered, I feel pretty under-recovered. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, it, you know, I, I enjoy it. Cool. So, perfect example there. And uh, obviously – we're not getting paid by any of these. No, but, but so, if you want to, <laughs> put your link in the uh, your referral link in the. That's right. The thing. <laughs> so with Whoop, I wore that. I was an early adopter, and I, and I assume the technology has approved. But it would always tell me you touched on the strain score, mm -hmm. which is I guess is they take various data points and put them together to basically say, hey, are you in a good enough state to work out today or train today? And if your score is really high. That means you've strained really high, right. and you probably should rest today. I could never recover. And so days, according to Whoop, and it would always say that I had a high strain score. And I've, I just, I'm going to assume that if my body, my body's probably the best indicator. I agree. So if I feel good, I should probably go out and work out. Yeah. So I, I gave the Whoop about a week to two weeks, and... It actually prevented me from working out because I was like, "Oh, I'm going to listen. <laughs> I'm going to listen to what this watch that's wearing on my wrist says about what I don't know about my body, rather than listening yeah. to my body." And and I just I I was like, "People, you were probably like, where were you this week?" I was like, well, "I was listening to my watch. It said not to <laughs> not to work out." But that's a perfect example right there of yeah, I've used data other than just how I feel about it. So there's another thing that wearables, and, and I, I thought this was really kind of comical at first. So there's there's many brands of this, but they're called Catapult Vest, and they're training vests. And I think a lot of football teams use them, basketball teams, baseball teams, and they wear them. And uh, I saw one of my favorite teams, I saw a practice video, and, and they were all doing summer training with it, and they looked like they had on sports bras. It, that's, oh, what, okay. that's what it looks like. Okay. I, mean, I was like, why, that, why are men wearing sports bras? Um, that's a whole nother issue. That, But it, these, <laughs> these and, and, and they wear them under their pads yeah, yeah. And, and things like that, and it tracks how hard they're being hit. And, and there's some very interesting data. So that's another yeah. thing that they're taking. And this technology is growing. There's actually a uh, – and my wife and, and her team uses this. It's uh, headquartered here out of um, – 
out of Athens. It's mm-hmm. called the NOAA shooting, um, I, I don't know, performance metrics mm-hmm. or whatever. But basically, you set them up in the gym, and it's different sensors. And you can go in there, and you can shoot on the sensor. And it tracks, like, your shot arc, your release velocity, all these different things. And it will give you a printout. And they've determined, based off their data, this is a proper shot technique. This is the release time. This is that's all great stuff. But basketball is about as unique as as it comes. And and there are people out there. And I'm not saying this is how it is, but they have unique shooting forms, and they're ballers, baby. Like think about how many different people are in the NBA that have unique shooting it, forms. <clears throat> you know, it's funny you say. It's funny you say that because baseball is the same way. Yeah, I think at the it doesn't matter how you look, you have to get the bat at a certain on a certain plane, and I think it's the same thing on a shooter, right? You can sh- mechanically you have to do you can be totally different, but as long as you, these certain things happen, you're gonna put the ball in the net. Yeah, is, is that fair? Yeah. Okay, so I think that's a great example of how in analytics can deter younger athletes. Well, my metrics don't fit this mold, or my bat angle, or this at this position. Well, I mean, you talk to any great baseball coach, don't change a swing. Yeah, you get to a certain spot, you're like, hey, I don't, you know, you, you can do all these things, but at this point, you have to be here. Yeah. Then you're good. Yeah. So as as dads and parents and out there, let your kids be kids. As long as they're getting to the spot that they need to get to, let them play the ball game. Yeah, and and. I'm not saying that there shouldn't be correct technique and practice right. correct technique, but every kid's going to have unique styles That's right. and they're going to have unique ways of doing things that work for them. Yep. And your point of don't correct it if it's working, you don't want to build bad habits, Bad habits. That's but right. you also don't want to say there is only one way yeah, that exactly. you can do something. You, you kind of segued into where we were going for. There is hope. <laughs> okay. There, there is hope right. in this this sea of of data and, and analytics. But the main point that we were trying to make up front is th- this is it's going to continue to be it's going to ten- continue to evolve. Agreed. And the technology is is only going to get better, and the things that we measure are only going to get more exact. And the databases that we have to compare athletes and kids at any age is only going to grow. And the kids that will give up before they even step foot on the field, fully develop, even put in the work to get better as an athlete, yes. will quit because they can look at that data yep. and say, I'll, well, I'll never be that. And so what we're going to talk about now is how to actually overcome that, not entertain that mindset, and keep your kid engaged and going down that path. And uh, so we, we got some tips here. We worked up some some tips yeah. here. I think they're pretty good. I like them. So, number one, which I don't know if you came up with this or I came up with this. Uh, I know it was me. I came up with it. I, I was about to say, that's, <laughs> that's, that's 100% you. That's 100% so, you on that one. Yeah. So, number one is is something that's very simple, simple, simple to do. I can't talk today. Is limit your exposure to the data, especially as a parent. Um, us as fathers, and you touched on a little bit today, but I didn't want you to steal all the glory, <laughs> is limit the data that your kid sees and be mindful what your kids are talking about. They're going to come talk to you about some That's of right. these things and these things that, well, so-and-so is doing this, and they're going to have pretty specific things that they're saying. And, and I would encourage you to to ask them questions, get them to, hey, where did you get those numbers from? Right. Like, what makes you think that that's that that's where you need to be or that and and they could be right but encourage them to say like that's not the only metric that that's that, right. that matters or here's how we can improve yeah. if that's where you're at yeah. like you're not because that's where you're at now that's not where you're going to be uh, and that leads into our next one i say fall in fall in love with the process don't fall in love with the result yep and i think that's focus on your your growth as an athlete and don't compare and just keep Grinding. If it's something that you want, if your athlete wants to do this, fall in love with the process of getting better. Yeah. And, and if you're going to look at data, look at your own data. Exactly. And compare it to where you're going. How do I get better at my data, yeah. not where everybody else's data is? And when you see those improvements, 
you know that you're making progress exactly. and you know that you're you're actually achieving right. something. Exactly. So, yeah, so the other thing is, and you talked about this personal growth, but um, set realistic goals, mm-hmm. but work hard. Yep. That's the one thing that you can't measure. That's right. In data is work ethic. Yep. And I, while literally you can measure the heart in data, mm-hmm. heart rate, heartbeat, heart health, you can't measure the actual heart. Right. right. How hard am I willing to work? That's right. And that means perseverance, overcoming the people that tell you you can't do anything, that you can't do this, you're too short, you're too small. And that is a mindset. To me, it's the most valuable thing that you can have. Because what's the old saying? Hard work beats talent All when day. talent doesn't work hard. That's right. I was told I would never be a college baseball player. Yeah, I was told I'd never be a college football player. And guess what? It happened. It happened. Yeah. And not even that, like, was told I'd never play, even, yep. even after I achieved the goal yeah. of, of, and ended up all-conference team captain. Yeah. And it, I attribute that to the work ethic. And I think, and, you know, the reality is, is you know, how many how many kids in youth sports are going to play play college? The, the percentages, I think, are like 6 or 7% of the last thing I saw in, in various sports. And then beyond that, I mean, you're like a less than 1% going into being, making money and being a professional. But – the work ethic, I know it has set me up for success later in life. And as parents and as dads talking to their kids about this, that's what you have to teach. Yep. Like you have to teach them that you have to work hard because it's going to set them up for success later in life. And because nothing's ever going to be given to you. Yep. <clears throat> you no, know, I, I, I agree. Regardless of what the world's telling us right now in this stage, <laughs> that's a whole nother topic. Yep. But you know, you have to persevere and, and work hard, and that—that's where you sports played a pivotal role in my life. Yeah. And if the data and stuff like that is driving kids out of that, well, there's a problem. Yep. Yeah. So what I always tell Jax, Jax is my seven-year-old, but I always tell him hustle. Yep. So that's your work hard. Hustle more than anybody out there. Work harder than anybody out there. And the next day, thing that I tell him is encourage teammates. And that brings us to our next point. Yep. Teamwork and sportsmanship. Not being taught very well today. No, no. Yeah, not being well, taught. I mean, if you look at it and, you know, I'm speaking again in the baseball world, you know, they, they they have these Super Bowl travel teams where they where they pull kids from, you know, all over North Alabama to come to compete in one team and they never play together and they're all about well, it, it, this is this is for me. Yep. I gotta have to have my metrics and my stats to be able to do X, Y, and Z, and they don't care if they win or lose. It's just a, it, it's about well, I mean, I won't say they don't care about that, but they, they care about winning. Yeah, they care they care about winning, but it doesn't matter how they win. Yeah. Well, that goes back to the individualism, and data promotes that. That's right. It absolutely does because the data is not largely team data. Right. It's individual data. Right. And if I don't get mine. I won't be seen. Right. I won't get recruited. Yeah. And, and that, I think that varies per sport a little bit, you know, because baseball is a team sport, but it's also a little bit of an individual sport. You know, football is, you know, very much a team sport because all, all 11 players on the field at some time have to be doing their job. But I, I, <laughs> I would say it if we don't as parents encourage, to en- encourage our kids to yeah. encourage their teammates. Right. Then they're only going to be thinking about themselves. That's right. That's right. And that's the big thing. Don't be worried about your stats because I've seen kids and, and my kids too. They get shut down. Like they'll quit playing. Yeah. If I didn't get my fifteen points tonight, then I'm going to go pout and I'm going to be a terrible teammate. And I'm just. It doesn't matter if we win the game. If I didn't get mine, I'm not happy. We can't. Ha- we cannot teach kids like that. We got to be that. If you don't get your points. If you don't get your assist, if you don't get your rebounds, if you don't get your tackles, you don't get your interceptions. But, but we win. But we win, and you contributed, or yeah. you and that contribution could be encouraging your teammate, yeah. who made a bad play, to get back up, yeah. and and your encouragement helped that kid make a play that that may have been the the game winning pick six that you won the game. Or think about this, you know, shut down corners. People don't throw at shut down corners. There you go. How, how many interceptions are you getting? They're probably going to be lower because they're not going to throw you away. Yeah. So no stats. Yeah. So what are you doing? You're running yeah. them down the field with a guy all night long, locking yeah. them down. Um, yeah. But I, I like our next one too. Go for it. Right. Balance. 
a balanced approach, right? At that age, it should be fun and enjoyable. It's yeah. about it's a game. This is a game yeah. that unfortunately has been monetized to where now, like you have your AAUs, and there's a purpose for it. But I was talking to a guy the other day. There's really not much rec ball out there. You know, rec no. ball isn't the thing. It's everything's got to be travel, travel, travel. Yeah. And, you know, spending seven, eight thousand dollars a summer to send your kids all over. I, think about that. Seven to eight thousand dollars to play a game yeah. and to travel to be seen at 10 years old. Yeah. It, it, so, you know, there's a place for it. But the thing about it is, is if you're. Let your kids enjoy the game. Yeah. Make it fun for them. Yeah. And I think teaching them everything we've already talked about is going to allow them to not put pressure on themselves of being in a box that data says you have to be in. Yeah. Because if it's not fun, guess what's going to happen? They may be all into it now, but they're going to burn out by the time they get to the age of when, okay, now data is being experienced. Because I'll tell you right now, I played with some. I played with some really, really good athletes. That by the time they were 16, 17, 18, and had the opportunity to go play in college, and some of them had the talent to go play elsewhere, they were like, "I'm done. Yeah, I've been burned out. All burned out. They burn out. Yeah. And I think in today's age, that's more of a reality than it was when we were growing up. Yeah. Oh, it definitely is. So balance, balance. Um, and lastly, this is is probably going to be more prevalent as. If let's just say that your your kid is lucky enough to be recruited and have college opportunities, but it it, it even works with high school or AAU ball. You need to be as a parent selective and find the right fit for your child. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that you choose it for them, but you need to pay attention to coaches. And if yeah. a, a coach is just extremely just this is the way that I'm going to be and everything is going to be measured by metrics and data. And they just, that's all they ever talk about. And that's all they ever focused on. Then maybe you should, maybe you should kind of have second thoughts about that. And I'm not saying that data is, is bad because I know there's a lot of good coaches at highest level that make data informed decisions. And that's great. Yeah. But if that's all they focus on, and they miss that a kid has unique skills, unique talent, and how can I develop that talent to help my program? I think that's the way that it should be. Yeah, I agree. instead of you don't meet this, then then I don't have a spot that's for you. That's right. And there's a lot of coaches that are like that. Yeah, I think it, it, I think it comes out of the kid too. I mean, and looking you know realistically, like what's your goal? You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, I think we talked about the percentage of you know, kids coming out of college that are going to be professional athletes. Like, you know, you, you have power. You have power five. You know, your big your big schools and mm-hmm. hey if you have the talent to play at that level yeah if you want just want to go and be on the team and you have the talent to just be on the team okay in your development but if you're if you know if maybe your talent's not quite there yet there's nothing wrong with going to a small school yeah there is nothing wrong with that yeah and don't have the mentality why well, didn't get recruited I'm not D1 go play D3 yeah. go play D2 go play NAI ball you're playing a game you're playing a game it continues it allows you to keep and playing that's right and with today's transfer portal i mean that's an entry point to get to where you want to be oh how many how many small look at basketball right now oh my gosh how many small school college athletes play two or three years and then now they're being picked up power five for like yeah. their last two years or, or one year there there's something like thirty thousand kids a year go into the portal yeah it's a, that's a whole nother topic 63 percent of them don't come out so that's the, <laughs> I don't know that that's a good thing. So be careful with the transfer portal. Hey, we're gonna have yeah, we're, we're gonna have a whole another talk on that. We, too. Hey, we, we had a lot of topics today, yeah. but hey, everybody, I, I really hope that you found these tips helpful. Yeah. And uh, it, as a parent, I hope you can use these tips to help your child maintain their passion for sports and excel both on and off the field. Not just be limited to to by what data and databases say or what somebody else says. But remember, be the hardest worker in the room. Encourage others that's right and and then just keep a well balance right and limit yourself with that and that'll that'll keep you where you need to be so that's a wrap for today blair i love it got another one in the books baby yeah all right yes sir rock and roll until next time see you guys see you